I agree with Kurt, and if we want to end on a good note, I think this is a good place to stop because uh, I, I think it's a good idea that we're talking about this already. There is that popular misconception that we wait until the end to do everything, but we're talking about this, this, j this jobs bill being done mm -hmm. in the first month of session and getting people to work hopefully by March, April, and May in these jobs. And so I think we would, uh, we would actually give politics a good name is if we all sit down, and, and this is just the first meeting. It's not the only meeting, and we wait until April to meet again. So I hope this is the first of many meetings where we sit down across the table. We're not going to agree or be happy about everything, as uh, Senator Ress said, but if we can compromise and cooperate, that's going to move us along. And we can do that. I mean, you see Kurt and I, you know, we'll give each other jabs and stuff, but at the end of the day, we used to sit next to each other before we had these big important titles. And at the end of the day, we can shake hands and go have a drink afterwards. And that's been missing in politics. And, and we're going to have our philosophical differences, but we just got to come together at the end and each be a little unhappy with the result. And, that, and then Minnesotans will probably be more happy with the result. All right, you know what? We are running late. I'm going to I'm going to owe you. How's just that? Just okay, just very quickly. Response. And <laughs> short responses. Very short. Yeah. Thank you, Mark Stangline with the Hennepin County Board. In the spirit of waiting to the end, what are your thoughts on the Minnesota Viking situation? <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, I've got to pick I up had my a daughter. stadium <laughs> question, but I decided not to ask it. Kurt, Kurt's going to go with family values on us and leave to pick up his kid, but um, <laughs> There are going to be politicians on both sides of the aisle that say not one single cent of taxpayer dollars. That's how it always is. And but what if they win the Super Bowl? Well, well yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, and they're going to be, and, and, but these stadiums always get built. They always get built at the end of the day. They do. And so um, the question then you have to ask yourself is, does it make economic sense to do it now when construction costs are down and people are out of work? And that's the question we have to answer. I mean, we can, we can have the fight and we'll have the fight. and and. And I, I just think part of it makes sense that if it's cheaper now and if you, you can get the political will, make it happen. But right now there's not a plan in place, so it's hard to commit and say it's a great idea because there's no you know, host community and all that, and the Met Council is fighting with the Vikings, and they'll get that all straightened out. But these are the questions we have to ask ourselves. We'll have the political fight, we'll have the philosophical fight, but at the end of the day they always get built. So should we do it when it's the, it's the cheapest to do it and provide the most jobs? Well, and Tony actually made a good point. This is actually handed out for us so that when they come to lobby us, we can get everybody's signature <laughs> as they come to our office. Uh, you know, I agree with Tony. I don't, I, there's, there's no absolute way we can uh, you know, write out a check and say, here, Minnesota Vikings, here's $300 million from the state of Minnesota. Congratulations. We want you to stay. Way to go, Brett Favre, MVP of the Super Bowl. But uh, there's going to have to be some sort of creative solution. It can't be just a, a check. It can't be, no offense to... Minnesota Twins, it can't be a uh, sales tax and, and that kind of package. There's going to have to be some part of it. Uh, where we were in the majority and uh, during the Twin Stadium, we're now in the minority. So and as uh, one of my uh, colleagues on the other side of the aisle said then, I'm glad this is your guys' problem and not ours. <laughs> but that being said, uh, I, I know there's a member, number of members of our caucus that do want to see something done as well. And uh, again, if there's a part of Minnesota heritage that's been here for quite some time, I'd say the Vikings. Unfortunately, I think one of our other... Uh, <laughs> things we were known for is losing the Super Bowls. I hope we correct both of those this year. And uh, I do think there's a possibility, um, but it's not going to be, no offense, Commissioner, it's not going to be high on our, uh, our, our list of priorities. It will be towards the end of session and, and probably be a, uh, you know, something that even the Vikings don't like, but, are, but we'll be willing to take just to get off the, off the into a new stadium. All right, great. Please join me in thanking our guests this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, that does, <laughs> that does conclude our program. Um, I want to give special thanks again to Grand Casino Malax and Hinkley. Thank you very much. And also um, all of our sponsors today, Politics in Minnesota and Capital Report, Citizens Independent Bank, Minnesota Viking, Schechter, Dock and Cantor, Swank Audiovisual, and Voyager Bank, and Comcast. And one last thing, don't forget, the next legislative breakfast, say it with me, is Thursday, February 11th with the governor. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.